usually the first inkling of, well, or the first thing that we do before we go out is kind of thumb through this book written by this psycho, Fred Becky, who has, in the course of these three books, written a description of every mountain in Washington State. It's, they're pretty amazing in their thoroughness. They have uh, good photos and maps and descriptions of literally every mountain that you've never heard of in Washington State, like Skyscraper Mountain. Never heard of it. Carved from pre-Mount Rainier Rocks. Anyway, I don't have this camera very long, so it's fun to just sit around in a nice warm house and thumb through the book and see what you feel like doing during the summer. Last summer came upon this page which is the north side of Rainier and uh, it's been a lot of time on the south side but I've never done anything on the north side and we were thinking about going in here coming up this way and doing Liberty Ridge, which is this baby. The summit's actually over here. And uh, looked pretty cool. The route description described a pretty steep, airy climb. And uh, we figured we could probably do it in about three days since uh, there's going to be three of us. We were all pretty strong. We all had a fair amount of experience doing this kind of thing. So we sat around and thought about it. Rather than coming back down this scary ridge, we thought it would be really cool to carry all our equipment up over the top and come down a way that we had climbed before from the crater down. This winds up going back and forth a few times down the way all the guides take the people up across to Camp Muir, which is a couple of huts, and back down to the car, a traverse. So the first plan we had was to go and check out the mountain, so we went and saw what was happening down there and then proceeded to get it together. You're not going to be able to see it real well on this map, but the first thing to do is to get two cars down there. Obviously if you're going to go walk over top of the mountain with 45 pounds of gear, you want to have some way to get back to your original car. So most of the tourists go down here to Paradise and you can walk up in here and there are really great views of the glaciers and such. And uh, most of the guide guided tours will go up this way, which is how we wanted to come down. So the first thing we did was park one car down here at Paradise on a, I think it was a Sunday afternoon, real crowded, we had to park way down the road. Actually, we did squeeze our car in, finally, up at the guide house. And then, we got back in the car and drove clear around the mountain to this side, to sunrise. And our aim was to walk in this way, no telling how long it was going to take, go across the Winthrop Glacier, across Curtis Ridge onto the Carbon Glacier, up Liberty Ridge, to the top and back down the guide route. We figured three days, four days, tops. Uh, there was not going to be any hurry. It was going to be really nice to have some time. So, thinking about it for several weeks, we finally arrive at sunrise, everything in place, and a car full of shit. Carload of shit. Now, it was obviously a great day to be out there. We're getting some just great views of things. What we were trying to do is go up over this hill here, down on this ridge, and down into this thing, which is called St. Elmo's Pass. At which point we'd head down, cross a couple of glaciers, climb up Liberty Ridge here. This part here looked pretty exciting to all of us. It was a just a icy slope. You can maybe see some bright reflection off of here. And, you know, obviously a drop would be not desirable. So 
So anyway, we made our way towards St. Elmo's Pass. Down the tourist trail. Getting farther away from civilization all the time. 50 pounds of shit. We finally crested the ridge overlooking St. Elmo's Pass. So we were going to go down on the edge of this snow here. Try to stay on snow because it's easier to walk. Get down to this low point. And eventually we wound up camping right down in here on the edge of the glacier. Uh, I kept getting nicer and nicer views. We could see pretty much a lot of the route. What we were going to do is head across here, find our way through here. Actually, these things are all crevasses. It was still fairly good going. And then we were going to make it up Curtis Ridge here and up over the top to get down to the Carbon Glacier, which would lead us to Liberty Ridge. We got a really good view of our campsite. We were hoping to make it here the first day. That was to be a joke. It's called Thumb Rock. It's a little tiny saddle, a flat spot, where you can camp. And then we were going to head up here, and here's this funky snow and ice slope that just drops off into nothingness. So we're getting some really nice color changes on the camera. Anyway, heading down the, the ridge towards St. Elmo's Pass became kind of a drag. Here's the snow ridge. I don't know if you can see this right here, but we ran into a couple of goats up in the middle of nowhere. And here's the crevasse glacier up in the background. So we headed down this snow ridge here, and then this rocky stuff was a nightmare. It's really slippery and slidey and not really dangerous, but very unpleasant carrying a 60-pound pack. There's uh, these high-quality 8mm movies of the goat. There are two of them. I don't know if you can see both of them. And the snowy ridge. Here's this nasty, rocky junk. It got worse and worse. Of course, we didn't film. We finally got down onto the Winthrop Glacier and uh, felt pretty low down. Can't really see a heck of a lot from this area, but we had a nice little camp and we spent about must have taken about eight or nine hours that first day to get to this point. We decided it was enough for one day. Uh, we didn't have a tent. We used just sleeping bags and bivy sacks and camped out. Uh, we had signed out for five days, and uh, this was one day we figured that we didn't get to Thumb Rock was just fine. Danny on the Winthrop Glacier. Felt good to have him along. He's Clyde McKinley and the Matterhorn and all kinds of stuff. And it was nice to have a third person on the rope that had a lot of experience and that you could trust. He felt pretty safe most of the time. And Ellie and Danny on our camp at the Winthrop. I think this is the following morning. It was really, we were lucky to have great weather. This is the Curtis Ridge ice cliffs at, in the background. They're several hundred feet high perspective on these shots is totally uh, untrue. This is camp movies of the camp on the Winthrop Glacier. Cloudy that evening. This must be the next morning looking back the way we came. and up the hill. The next day we crossed the Winthrop Glacier through a gully and after several undulations on the Rit Curtis Ridge up and down and up and down and up and down we finally reached the top of the ridge and could see what we were doing here and uh, it was an amazing sight being this close to what we'd seen in the books several times what we planned to do was go up this way. The real route is around this way. The rangers told us that their rangers went out and couldn't find a way through these crevasses that way, so we figured we'd go up. And I could see right on this dirty little spot here, it looked like there was a way to get through. 
up here. It would require some weaving back and forth, but it looked like we could somehow get to the bottom of the ridge that way and work our way up here to Thumb Rock, which is right here. Then the, we were planning on taking a day off there probably and then working our way up this ice slope and getting around this mess up here and going over to the summit. Here we go, working our way across the last part of the glacier and through this nasty ice and rock fall to get out the other side. And here's one of the many undulations of Curtis Ridge that we had to go up, stepping hour after hour. Danny behind and Ellie in the middle. Little lake we stopped at full of all kinds of little bugs. There the cliffs start looking bigger and bigger. We're lucky we had nice weather though, July. And there we finally crested the top of Curtis Ridge. You can see Liberty Ridge in the famous ice slope. The weather was cooperating. We had been out probably eight, nine hours at this point that we could see this view. Starting to get a little late, but we figured we'd push on a little farther. And, you know, we were starting to really be amazed at how big this thing really was. So we went down this shooting gallery slope uh, in order to get down to the glacier, we eventually worked it out and found our way up. And as the sun was starting to go down, we worked our way up this part of the glacier and found a nice flat spot right here where we decided that that would be enough for today. We were out probably 12 hours or more that day to get to that point. Here's our little camp on the edge of this huge crevasse. And in the background here, you can kind of see this slope we had to come across. We had to come across there and then down this gully where there were quite a few rocks falling due to the late hour. But anyway, it was a, again another great day and really nice campsite, campsite. From our camp, we could look up and see the route that we wanted to take and we'd eventually hopefully get to the ridge right here thumb rock right there that was our next stop hopefully and this section here which would lead us once again to the icy slope and up over the top depending on the angle you were at and from here it really didn't look too too bad here we are making our way the following day I think this is the fall. No, this is the same day. Up towards the camp at the top. It's a avalanche coming down. This is the following day. Avalanche coming down. It's called Willis Wall. Which is a place you probably don't want to be at this time of year. Huge avalanche. One of the pieces of the cliff broke off. Sat and watched that for a while. And during one of our breaks, we're working our way up the Carbon Glacier towards the ridge. And we had some exciting times during this part. We go crossing a, crossing a big broken piece of the glacier. The scenery was getting more and more amazing. We were weaving our way back and forth between those big crevasses. There's Danny in the back and Ellie and I was doing something up here waiting for them to come around so we didn't get too much slack in the rope in case somebody did fall or fall in. Uh, the, one of the key moves at this point we were working our way around in this area here and uh, actually we had originally started off without thinking too clearly and went up in this area and got totally dead-ended by all these crevasses Actually, Ellie did take a fall down this slope, and we wound up doing the team arrest on the rope, and everything was fine. It was actually good to know that we could stop if somebody did fall. 
And then we figured out that we did have to go around this way. That was my fault. I wasn't really awake at this point. And uh, we did get on top of this dirty smudge here, but up here there was one key move that got us to the base of the ridge. And this was probably one of the last big crevasses we had to cross. Uh, this is a really long slope. The perspective again is just not worthwhile. And I'm putting in a picket up here, so if we do fall, we don't go the entire length of the rope before something stops. And here's the very base of Liberty Ridge, so we really did climb the ridge from the bottom up. It was a matter of working back across here, and we eventually found ourselves on the base of the ridge. Shot up the slope. We eventually went up this way and wound up going on the rocks instead. It was really awful. A lot of big boulders falling down that we'd kick loose and not very good footing and steep enough so you're constantly having to work against gravity. We went across here and took a break for a while and continued to work across the top of this ridge. Pretty ugly climbing, dirty and steep and loose and not very pleasant at all. We're headed towards some rock which is right in there. And there we are at Thumb Rock. Look, it did rain the following morning, our day off. It was nice and cool at least, but there was a big old thunderstorm that came through. And it made things a little scary. The lightning only a mile or so away. So shitty weather this day. The only flat spot on the ridge and we're sitting in it. So our third day on the mountain wound up digging into a little snow slope and uh, there's Danny crashed out in his bivy sack. We had a pretty good night that night. The trip up to Thumb Rock took again another 12 hours probably. It was hot, didn't have any water. So the day off really came in handy. It was nice to rest and kind of get rehydrated and ready for what laid ahead. The following day it did rain. Got a couple quarts of water inside my bivy sack and it was pretty uncomfortable but we really didn't have a hell of a lot of choice at that point. Uh, we were just happy to not be moving for the day and to have some time to uh, get it together for the rest of the climb. So certainly that day we were worried about the weather. Sitting up here in this little saddle at Thumb Rock. Uh, we had signed out again for five days, figuring it would take four. That was our third day. On the fourth day, I think it was the fourth day, figured out the fourth day was the rest day. On the fifth day, we got up before dawn and headed up the ridge. What we eventually did, let me get that, okay. Those damn long distance companies. So the point was to head around here, go up in this area, head for the top which we did. So we made our way up. We found a little flat spot part way, part way up and were able to sit down, although at this point you're constantly fighting gravity, uh, trying not to fall, and the flat spots became farther and farther in between. We finally got to a point which was a real milestone. We wound up coming around this way and up in here, and there, right here, there's a little ledge right there where we could finally stop. The ledge was probably about 10 feet long and about 4 feet wide. And that uh, was the first chance we had had to sit down in several hours. The sun had already come up. And here's the scene from that little perch. Just barely enough room for three of us to sit down. Here's the scene from the little perch. 
we'd all made it up by now. Got the stove going, and melted a little ice, and the weather was looking promising, although we were getting tired. There's a view down this steep slope that we had just come up, down to where we had been the day before. And I think we're all thinking, holy shit, this is the beginning of the big ice slope. And there's a little spindrift coming down the big ice slope. Look pretty nasty. And up. Here's the view down the big ice slope. And every move was difficult because of the steepness and you'd always be knocking rocks or knocking snow down behind you and you're trying not to fall and it starts to get pretty high and pretty feeling pretty high up. At this point we're all feeling pretty tired and looking looking like we had a long way to go but this was the, the meat of the climb right here. Here's Ellie giving me a belay up this steep ice slope and this will maybe give you an idea of the steepness, I mean, I'm basically standing, standing upright, walking up this slope, carrying a, an 80-pound pack on my back. I wonder my back hurts. And this is looking up the, up the big ice slope. What we eventually did was entered as a ledge around here and entered it here and just went right up the right-hand side of it. Uh, the good part was that the weather is nice, and we knew we were getting close to the end of the climb or so we thought. This was the fifth day and this was the day we were planning on being out. They send out search parties after you, airplanes and such, if you are overdue by very much. So we were really hoping to be out this day since we were running out of food, fuel, no fuel, no water, because you can't melt snow. So no matter how tired we were, we were going to make a definite effort to get out. Here we go. Ellie in the middle. I was out in front, leading up the very beginning of the big slope. And this picture here, you can see this rock right here. That rock is, in fact, this rock right here. So we made our way up here and we stopped filming at about this point because of the difficulty involved. It took many hours to get up this slope here. The next point we found to stop was a little tiny sort of ledge right here. This was kicking in steps and digging out steps with an ice axe the whole way up this slope. It must have been a thousand feet tall probably. Took probably three or four hours to get from this rock here where we're starting up to the top. And uh, it was steep, relatively icy, uh, scary. So we finally got up top of the big ice slope and it didn't necessarily ease off too much. I mean, it was a relentless angle. We had probably been out a good 12 hours by this point. Pretty damn tired at this point thinking get me the hell off of this thing. It was fun, it was exciting as hell being up that high and on something that steep. But we were all at this point I think looking forward to having it completed. We had long ago reached the point of no return so no matter what happened the only way out was to get up out of the top, get up over the top somehow. In that photo we're sitting on a little ledge right here we were figuring we're getting pretty damn close at this point. The hard part, the famous hard part, was going to be to find a way through this garbage up at the top here. And uh, we had a picture out of the guidebook that we went went for. And in any case, Danny starts leading up out of that little stopping place. And I was pretty tired at this point, having kicked steps the whole way up that thousand foot slope. And I just wanted to kind of coast a little bit in somebody else's footsteps and uh, to give you an idea how steep it was. Uh, this is where it moderated a little bit. And, you know, it's just the relentless long nature of this slope. 
just there you're always fighting gravity even when you're sitting down so we headed up towards the top again we're getting so tired we didn't do a hell of a lot of filming at this point but Danny in the lead not super familiar with the mountain I just kind of let him go on his own we wound up getting up here and we tried to find a way up this part here and what happened was we hit a, a dead end and wound up having to come back at this point the sun's going down and we were just too tired to even consider getting up and going back down this day fifth day we've been out probably 14 15 hours at this point so we decided to re reluctantly found a little flat spot up in here and camp for the night unfortunately we were below a big ridge had snow blowing up over us the entire eight or nine hour night we got buried in snow seeping into our bivy sacks again we didn't really have the energy or the desire to try to cook and we only had an ounce or two of fuel which we were saving in case of emergency so we we're basically out of water the clouds blew in at night and we basically couldn't see anything it was kind of worrisome we needed to find uh, the ramp to get out of this mess and get up over the top so we decided to just rough it out and knew we would be at least a day late so had a difficult night and next morning got up early used basically the last of the fuel to melt a little bit of water uh, we were pretty uncomfortable with being dehydrated and without a lot of food left we had a candy bar or two and tried to say and make that last we were basically wasted at this point and the clouds blew away and after a couple of difficult crosses over some thin snow bridges still fighting gravity the whole way we wound up uh, finding the ramp that we needed to find to get up onto what's called Liberty Cap which is the highest point of that side of the mountain, one of the three summits. And uh, I started out, got over a couple of difficult bridges, and Danny led around a difficult turn, and we eventually found this. Finally, the final slopes of Liberty Cap, which was steep again, but at this point, we knew we were going to do it. There's a close up of the tromp up the final relatively easy slope just waiting every second every step to reach the top of the cap and finally we arrive not knowing that this isn't the end of the climb that you're only halfway there when you're at the top we uh, sat down had a little rest wonderful picture of Danny and Ellie. I don't have a lot of time left on this camera rental so let's do this up. Uh, cold up there, very windy. And we were exhausted but nevertheless still pretty damn happy to have reached some flat area. So what we had just arrived at is right on the other side of this baby here and quite a long way from where we had to be. We had to walk across this saddle, up the back side, up this little, actually up this little slope here to the highest point, which is on the crater. Uh, but again, the distances are deceiving. The view across from Liberty Cap, across to the saddle that we walk across, and then up this long slope to this part here, and that's the highest point right there about a mile away at least and there's the view back the other way I think this is the view back the other way and there's Liberty Cap and we walk along no I think Danny took this picture actually and we're headed that away the view out to the west down the big old Tahoma Glacier and uh, it's just nice to see some flat area I think I put my Walkman on at this point and could have walked forever. There's a battered Ellie, victorious, on the top of Liberty Cap. The picture is a little out of order. Anyway, we tromped our way across the saddle. At this point, we had just climbed up here and we're working our way that way across this expanse of the top. 
I guess it's not surprising, but once we hit this big snow slope here, there's very few pictures until we get to the top. So we made it up that long slope, and here we are making the crossover from Liberty Cat to the summit, which is over there. It's a long walk. There we go, making it up the very final slope. And that went on forever, one step at a time. God, just get me there. Finally, we arrive at the top. We had done it. The hardest climb I've ever done. Windy as hell up there. Liberty Cap is right there. I think I was trying to... You could see our foot footsteps all the way across there, but not in the film. Real high quality cinematography here by myself. And then, of course, the pile of summit photos. Danny and me, and there's Mount Adams in the background. Billy and me on the top, still realizing we had to get back down again. More summit photos. We wound up going down into the crater for a while and resting, passing out, whatever you want to call it. There were steam vents and steam caves and stuff up there, so we wound up melting some snow in some of these steam vents. There was one right back here somewhere, but I don't think you can pick it up on the the photo. And uh, at this point, we didn't stay long. We stayed on the actual summit, a total of about five minutes. And uh, stayed in the crater about a half an hour, ate what was left. This was the sixth day. So, those are pictures from another trip. We wound up coming back down. The route goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth along that route. There's no one else on the hill at this point. And we had a day that was similar to this though, and there's a long track across that way, and we were making good time knowing that they might very well have sent out a search party at any time for us, which we would have felt bad about. And we wound up finally getting lower and lower. We reached Camp Muir, at which point everyone was glad to see us there. There was a weekend party waiting to go out. And we felt like heroes being out for six days on a difficult route carrying 105 pounds of gear on our back. And uh, they very uncharacteristically gave us drinks and food. And we stayed there at Muir an hour or so and then headed back down into conditions similar to this with a low fog layer. We wound up slide, butt sliding down into the fog and getting lost for a while, couldn't see anything, and it took us a good 12 or 13 hours, I think, to get from the where we started that day down to the car. It was 2 in the morning by the time we got to the car, after having spent a couple hours lost in the fog. Finally it cleared and we could see where we were needed to go, and uh, wound up collecting the two cars, and by dawn we were back in the house. It took a couple of weeks to recover lost some weight and basically lost some toenails from all the step kicking and uh, took a while to recover. Missed a gig that, that day since we were overdue and uh, in general had a, an exciting time. So maybe some of these 
sights will be familiar to you now. That's where we came in. And Liberty Ridge is the mother right in the middle. Winter photo. I just never forget that night camping right near the top there. Well, it took a couple hours. Not good at dealing with all this high-tech shit. <laughs>